How we doing, lads? Good evening. I uh, decided to do a second video today. Um, so I wasn't actually planning to release that uh, pseudo just for a little bit because I really just could not be bothered. Um, so what we're going to do from here is before we start moving into overstacking OSRB and that sort of stuff, we're going to talk about something called swinging. Now, you might have noticed that I have been talking about hammer ratios a little bit for some of these cannons. Um, where it was, say, shooting the one-shot sand uh, up. That's an example of it. Um, let's see if I can just replicate that quickly, just so you sort of get an idea about what I'm talking about. Set cobblestone stack 250 down. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to... Um, I'm just going to disable pretty much everything, so I'll disable that. Um, this is just the pseudo nuke I made in the previous video. So I'll disable that there, and then we can disable that. And that should have everything disabled. So if we fire this, you should see the one shot scene stack nicely. Oh, I've got no sand. That'd be why. Let's fire that again. Quite an ugly cat on this one. Now that I've changed the nuke three times. Anyway, yeah, you see that one shot sand stack up at the very, very top there. So what we're going to try doing is we're going to try playing around with our hammer a little bit. So if we say remove a dispenser, we'll see what happens. But basically we'll remove dispensers until what I want to happen happens. And I'll sort of provide an explanation for it. Don't know why that didn't work, to be honest. Oh, it's, we're under stacking because we're going under 300 TNT, that'd be why. Anyway, it's all sweet. Still, okay. I'm gonna put a dumb block here. I don't give a fuck about how much it's stacking right now, so I just want to show you what happens to the one shot one shot sand when you start playing around with the hammer issue. No, that was fine. A little bit more. We'll take a little bit more off. Sorry, and fire. Surely. Come on. It's annoying when you want something to happen, then it just doesn't happen. <laughs> no, it's, well, it's still working fine. Let's take another dispenser off. Fire. There you go. So you saw the one shot sand there bounced up. And normally you'd think that wouldn't be possible because the TNT is all exploding at one point, right? Well, it sort of isn't. So, swinging is something that, it's a bit hard to explain, um, but basically what's happening on the wall is the TNT is not exploding in the same block. So the explosion is actually spread around um, a couple of blocks when you've got, say, a lot of TNT exploding. Uh, it's only in the y-axis though. So what I'll sort of do to talk about that then is if we uh, stack this across a little bit here, stack 20 north, okay, we'll talk about this. So basically if we imagine our hammer hits here, this is our hammer, so we've got 300 TNT in the hammer here. So the first piece of TNT, there's no, no swing on it really, it's sort of just, it's in the middle is what I'm trying to say. So, the first piece of TNT it explodes in the middle. The second t piece of TNT is actually boosted upwards. This is all happening in the same game tick, um, but this is sort of how Minecraft calculates it. So the second piece of TNT actually affects here. So say if you have two hammer, what's going to happen is it's, I think it like skips like the first piece of TNT. It, it only calculates the velocity of whatever is inside that block in the last explosion, basically. So what's going to happen is if it explodes at the bottom there, you're going to get like a very, very slight velocity change um, because that one's, the one rev's already falling here. Um, TNT always explodes like a game tick. I think it's like a game tick after where its final point is. So if it goes for like 80 game ticks, it's actually going for 81 game ticks, but like the 81st game tick is tunneled or something. Something along those lines. I don't I don't know the physics that well about how precisely everything's timed. But basically what's going to be happening is um, 
it's going to just be all exploding in a fraction of a tick and it's going to be spread over I think it's like a three block area and I'm just going to set up a multi dispenser rig to talk about this and we'll start talking about the swing ratios but basically I think it's got like four or five separate positions so the TNT starts there and then it like explodes up above it and then it explodes up again I think then it goes down and then like that or something I don't know exactly I know for a fact that two pieces of TNT swing down though um, so if we go set emerald block stack 20 west we can we can actually prove um, sort of like the order in which it does swing for say like a set amount of TNT. So I'm just going to set this wall to be dime blocks here. Now the reason why swinging is so important is you saw like the one shot sand shoot up there. Um, you can actually abuse that to say um, if you render sand before, I'll talk about like one power shit in the next episode I think. Um, but if you render your sand before your hammer, you can actually stack using only one power. Um, so what you'll actually do on this wall here is you'll stack and then you'll use the swing from your hammer to shoot your one shot sand and additional sand up. And then you'll have a stopper and then you'll basically have a second hammer and you can restack higher. So it's called overstacking where you're physically stacking above barrel height. Um, I'll do that all like sort of talking about OE stacking in the next episode uh, but for now we'll just sort of like focus on the swing so uh, this is why ratios are very very important in cannons as well and you'll see that like a lot of OSRBs and overstackers they have very very set amounts of TNT they need to work it's all because of swinging so what we're going to do is we're going to go multi M150 and then uh, multi M1 Okay, so this is going to be the TNT that we're going to keep changing. That's going to be our swing. And we're just going to go multi M, M1 again. And then we're just going to put a piece of red sand in that, basically. Just something that's not going to explode, it's not going to despawn, so we can actually start testing this. Anyway, so what we'll do is we'll just go redstone, and then we'll just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. And then that can go up there, and then glass here. And let's put four tick repeater there. So we've got a little multi dispenser rig up now. That top one there has got um, ladder in it. Or oh, not ladder, what am I saying? Um, it's got sand in it, so we're going to need a block 36 to keep it as an entity, and we'll just get our bottom. So in this case here, because the, the explosion for the one riff, because this is one TNT at this point, is actually like physically below, because it always explodes in like the game tick. After effectively, um, I'll go in depth into that when we're talking about. Uh, I need a guider. I need a guider. Woo! Nice. Uh, I need to set that to dumb blocks. I'll talk about like sort of how that works when I talk about um, mid airs and shit a bit more. But for now, it's fine. Set diamond. What you really need to know about that is that one roof boosts TNT up. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Anyway. So we'll just tick up. So this is this is one ref. This is going to give you a very very slight upward swing. It isn't actually because of the swing of what? Oh, it's because it's. I think it's because it's just rented before. So let's try that again. Because that that should that should be giving upward swing too far. That's oh wait, it's just being weird. There you go. So you can see you got that initial bounce there. That's that's one roof. And you can also see like there I had this on the same timing and it actually it had a different impact on the on the sand if the sands are in it before or after your one roof. Um that will come into play later when I talk about OE stacking. But anyway, for now this is fine. So yeah, so that's one. So one it's it's we'll just say for now one sort of explodes just in the middle. So that's our first piece of TNT. The only reason why it's boosting it up is because that, yeah, again, physically gets um, the explosion physically occurs a little bit below in like um, in the uh, whatever you call it in like the next position effectively. So anyway, what we'll do is we'll get a multi dispenser of two. 
So what we'll do then is we'll just put a piece of TNT on the wall and we'll just put a sign on it. So this says one. One. And now this is a multi dispenser with two TNT in it. So we're going to TNT fill and we're going to fire. That one sort of had no impact. I didn't really see an impact. Um, you can probably track velocity. That one didn't really have an impact. So it might just be like two, so also in the middle. And we'll do three. It should have an impact. It should be shooting it down though. Oh, it's probably just down to um down to it falling against a wall, to be honest. Okay, so three you can see there actually bounces it up. So what we'll do is I'm just gonna put a piece of TNT here. Just imagine anything to the left or right is all gonna be in the middle. So and again this isn't gonna be a hundred percent accurate, it's gonna change on positions and everything else. But say for example this very, very specific text test rig here. That's actually exploding there now. So if we T5, or I'll change it to 4 actually. And 4, and then we'll T5. See what happens. So we've got 4 TNT there now instead. Sort of nothing. So we'll say that one is on this level. So that's 4, multi, and 5. So yeah, all that, all that TNT there is showing is just like the say just the rough Y height that's going off. So it looks like 5 shot it up again, so we'll say 5 explodes there. And we'll just do 6. Again, this, this is going to depend on like what you're trying to do with it, um, or where you're boosting it from, the velocity on it, all sorts of shit. That one looked pretty neutral, so we'll say that one goes there, that was 6. And then we'll go 7. And that one actually shot it down. So we'll say 7 goes up here. So you can sort of see a little bit why ratios are important. Some are going to give you little to no velocity, some are going to give you upwards velocity, some are going to give you downwards velocity. So we'll go to 8 now and see where 8 uh, puts us. Uh, that looks like nothing really. Eight. It seems to be just smoothing out a little bit. We'll do nine. That one shot it up, so nine's down the bottom here. Seems like all the odd numbers are sort of like in the in the top and the bottom. I don't know. The, again, the patterns are going to depend on, like, because this has got, like, downwards velocity and shit, so. It'll kind of really depend. That one sort of had no impact. That was, what, 10? And then 11. But you can see, even, like, with one piece of TNT here changing, um, you're going to get a different result each time. So that's sort of why that one shot up. So that's what, 10? That was 11. So, in, say, a scenario like this, where you have the um, hammer here, you can see that whatever hammer ratio we had here, we're shooting it up. Now, physically shooting it down is not going to matter, because it's just going to be stacking anyway. Um, but, physically shooting it up, you don't want that. So, basically, with, say, your normal hammer for now, you just want it to be swinging either down, or just little to no swing. So in a situation like this, 300 hammers perfect, um, because I think it just gives a very, very slight upwards amount of swing from memory when it's like not stationary, sort of stationary, I guess, when there's like a low upwards uh, Y velocity on it. So we'll just fire that, have a bit of a look. It's so hard to see a uh, FPS. So you'll, you'll see that it might just float in the air for like a, a second. Okay, that actually should... Wait, why'd that shoot it up? 
Ah, uh, okay. Uh, kind of no clue there, eh? I just dropped the glider down a little bit. Okay, let's try, let's try there. I know, there could be other factors to play as well. But basically, at this point, you know that like when, when I'm referring to swing, I'm talking about one of these. Why is that not stacking? I have no clue. Um, but yeah, when I'm basically referring to swing, I'm referring to the act of using differing amounts of TNT to basically give it a different um, upwards or downwards velocity on uh, depending on what I need. So specifically for overstacking, if you want to overstack first, you actually want to say a bit like that. So if we want to say overstack and we make this our hammer, we can go multi M3. And then if we T fire, oh, I just fired the wrong cannon there. Let's try that again with this cannon, actually. So you should see now. So you see it bounces it up there. Then you can just use, say, an overstack hammer, a stopper, and just some one shot sand, and then boom, you'll have. You'll be shooting it. Basically, what'll happen is you'll shoot against the wall, it'll stack your gravel. Um, you'll stack your gravel just like that. And then because of the upward swing, you're going to be shooting your, uh, your overstack sand, um, your overstack sand, your stopper, everything else is going to be shot up. And then what you can do from that is you can use OOE, um, uh, OOE stacking to actually physically stack sand above your guider, just like that. So yeah, that's that's sort of it with swinging. Um, it'll matter a lot more, and I'll talk about specific ratios when we are adding OSRBs, overstackers, and stuff like that. Um, but for now, basically, all you need to know is if your hammer is shooting your one-shot sand up, it's probably down to swinging, and you can just start fucking around with the ratios a little bit to get a different amount of swing and stack, basically. Um, so yeah, apart from that, I'll just catch you all in the next video.